So what is up, guys? Welcome to the Dynasty Fam Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. we got a good show for today talking about some week six waiver wire ads. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? Doing well, man. Excited to talk some waivers. Got, got a couple of good options. Kind of checking my team. I got Josh Jacobs going still in a couple of leagues. A couple of close battles. Um, so he's looking good, though. Josh Jacobs coming through. Good, good. So we're going to start. We're going to give you guys our top three at the wide receiver and the running back position. But we will start with the ugly position, the tight end. We got Hayden Hurst, and we got to mention Taysom Hill. I mean, you don't like it too much, right? But being able just as bad as tight end has been this year, right, outside of Andrews and Kelsey, to have a player with the upside of Taysom Hill, I mean, that's kind of what you want at tight end, right, as ugly as it is. But he goes out nine carries for 112 yards, gets three touchdowns. So he's got two games now. Another game he has 15. This game he has 35 fantasy points. So at your tight end, to have that high of an upside at your tight end position, definitely something that is good. And it can't just be right scoffed at. So Taysom Hill's got to be on here for us, as well as Hayden Hurst. I like Hayden Hurst. Whenever you know we have those games without Higgins, Hayden Hurst, he does well. He goes out, he has six. Seven targets, gets six receptions. He gets you uh, 18 fantasy points. He gets you a touchdown. So Hayden Hurst, definitely another, probably my preferred option right now on the waiver wire, but definitely got to mention Taysom Hill on there as well. Yeah, I mean, Taysom had a good week, but, I mean, I just – it's just too volatile for me. Um, I, I'm not somebody that I really want to play. Um, just because, too, we just don't know when is he going to pop, you know, when is he going to pop off, when are they going to use him at the goal line, when are they going to bring him in and use him in those wildcat formations or, um, he, you know, you just never know, right? Are they going to play him at quarterback? Um, so for me, like you said, no, he only had 30% of the snaps, right? He had a great game, but it was on 30% of the snaps. So can we rely on that going forward? I mean, I don't think so. Um, so I definitely prefer uh, Hayden Hurst if I need a tight end. Um, like you said, he had a, a solid game. He's got a better quarterback, I think, a better situation. So I prefer Hayden Hurst. All right, so we'll go ahead and transition. Let's start with the wide receivers. So wide receiver right here that we still like, right? We had him on our waiver sh show last week, I believe. But at our wide receiver three, we have Isaiah McKenzie. We know we had the big game from Gabe Davis. But McKenzie, man, he sat out, so probably dropped in, in some leagues, right? So still below 50% rostered. Isaiah McKenzie, I think, is just a solid option. You have Jamison Crowder down now. So I just like the opportunity that he's going to be presented here in the slot for Buffalo. So if he's back next week, I think Isaiah McKenzie is a solid little ad right now. Yeah, I agree, man, especially with the bye weeks coming up. He's got some good matchups um, against Kansas City, um, Green Bay, and the Jets. Um, and he was putting together a couple little run. He had a couple uh, – games in a row where he had over 12, 13 fantasy points, uh, got a touchdown in two straight games. Um, he was definitely showing some flashes. And then, like you said, with the injury to Crowder, um, he's going to be the, the third guy. He's going to be the slot guy. And we've seen in the past that um, Josh Allen really likes those slot receivers. He had uh, Cole Beasley in years past, and Cole Beasley would put up some pretty nice solid games for us. And so I think McKenzie can kind of be that similar uh, player, it looks like rest of the season yeah for sure also worth mentioning khalil shakir right if mckenzie's not back khalil shakir yeah. had a pretty good night all right so coming in as our wide receiver two for this week we have alec pierce so definitely getting some good uh increase in the snap share getting good opportunity he had nine targets this past week on 59 percent of the snaps he got you 80 yards he went eight for 80 16 fantasy points last week as well got you 80 yards I think it was 12 fantasy points last week also he's been really around 40 45 percent of the snaps this week finally gets 59 percent of the snaps and how's a solid week man 16 points with no touchdown on only 60 percent of the snaps that's very solid for alec pierce yeah for sure man and really the colts are just begging for anybody to step up besides Pittman. i mean matt ryan needs um some guys that he can throw the ball to um, their offense just hasn't really looked very good, especially this past week without Taylor. So hopefully he'll be back for us and for the Colts. But I do like Alec Pierce, man. He was talented at Cincinnati. He made some big plays for them. I think he can be a solid wide receiver too. 
uh, for the Colts moving forward. They just have a gaping hole and need at the wide receiver two position behind Michael Pittman. Yeah, for sure, man. So moving into our number one, and it was good to see, right? We have this player in a lot of dynasties. So Rondell Moore, we've been waiting for him to get a little bit of action out there. It was good to see, right? He came in pretty much. Dorch is out there now. Dorch is out of there. Rondell Moore comes in, 91% of the snaps, gets you seven receptions for 70 yards, right? Seven for 68. So that's solid, man. He gets you eight targets. So that's definitely good to see, man, for Rondell Moore owners. I think he's just, we know he's got elite speed, right? He's just a big play waiting to happen. Hopefully, right, if they can get him in some space, I think we can see some big games from Rondell Moore, especially if he's getting the targets now. Yeah, man. He's somebody I have a lot of shares up in Dynasty. I love, love, love Rondell Moore. I loved him coming out of Purdue. Um, he was just an, a, a great, great athlete, super, uh, super speed. Um, you know, I don't want to make the, you know, the Tyree Kill comparisons. Um, obviously, Tyree Kill is in a league of his own. But if he can be half of the player that Tyree Kill is, I mean, he's somebody that can help our teams. Um, and we saw it, right? We saw that he, he does have that electric big playability. Um, and what's something that is – also, I, I noticed is they, they are going to try to get him involved in the rushing game. He didn't he had two rushes and they were for negative yards. But I think that is something that is going to be a part of his game moving forward where they're going to try some jet sweeps or some uh, quick passes in the flat to try to just get him in space with the ball because he's so fast. So I definitely uh, am excited for Rondell Moore. Um, I'm, I'm excited for my Kyler Murray sh uh, shares. I got a lot of Kyler Murray shares, and he hasn't been playing to the level that I think he's capable of. Um, so hopefully getting back more, and then in a couple of weeks, hopefully Hopkins um, and maybe Kyler Murray could start playing better as well. So. Yep, definitely, man. So we'll go in and transition to our running backs. And we're going to give you our RB3 is going to be Joshua Kelly. So it looks like Joshua Kelly, right? We weren't sure who was going to kind of have that RB2 role there uh, for the Chargers. And it seems like it's Kelly, man. It seems like he's establishing himself there. They brought in Sony Michelle, so we were still not sure. But he gets 10 rush attempts for 50 yards, right? So 10 for 49, gets a touchdown. He also gets two targets, man. So 12 attempts there with the Chargers offense, 16 fantasy points for Joshua Kelly. And we all know, right, if he's getting, you know, 10 to 12 touches, I mean, that's good to see if he can get that. I mean, even if he's just getting around 8 to 10, I don't mind it. But really what you want him for is just the upside of just a high-end handcuff, right? But he's got some flexibility. He's getting, you know, 10-plus touches. But with Eckler, right, we know he has gone down in the past, right? So. If he Eckler were to go down, Joshua Kelly has some huge upside with the Chargers offense. Yeah, for sure, man. We were, uh, you know, a little worried, obviously, about Sony Michelle. But this past week, I mean, it's a small sample size, but Sony Michelle only a three percent snap share, right? So basically, not really playing. Uh, Joshua Kelly, twenty five percent snap share, like you mentioned, and obviously, this is Austin Eckler's backfield. But if Austin Eckler was to go down, I mean, Joshua Kelly would be. I mean, he'd be an RB 14, 15 easily just because of the workload, the offense that he plays in, right? With Herbert, he's going to get goal line touches. He's going to get passes out of the backfield. So he's definitely somebody that I think um, we could, you know, if not maybe look to play, but at least dash in these next couple of weeks because, like you said, uh, players get hurt, man. RBs go down, especially older veteran running backs um, as we get further into the season. Um, their bodies start to break down. So he's somebody that I definitely think needs to be rostered. Yep, for sure. And we'll go into our RB2 for the week is going to be Eno Benjamin. So him is similar, right, with Kelly. It's just the, the upside if something were to happen to Connor, which we have seen, and he's already banged up, right? He had some, I think it was his ribs that were hurting. So Eno Benjamin gets a little bit extra work. I think it was 54%. Of the snaps he gets eight eight carries four targets right gets you a touchdown so 14 fantasy points for eno benjamin and similar to kelly man if something were to happen to connor i mean we've seen it already right so eno benjamin is definitely someone that you could stash right now and he might even get you a little bit of work with some flex appeal for those weeks coming up yeah man and connor got banged up in the game he's dealing with some rib injuries um rib issues and connor we know 
I mean, he's been great with Arizona, but he has a, a pretty bad injury history. And so I definitely do like, you know, Benjamin, like you said, I mean, he, he has, he's in a great spot, great spot for, um, for just a stash RB in case of, of an injury for sure. Yep. And going into our number one running back. So we had him on here last week, and I just think the upside is just similar to these other guys, right? We're getting a little bit, you know, we're a little bit more into the season. A lot of guys are rostered. But this player right here, Rashad White, man, I still like him. He's still less than 50% rostered, and he's been getting work the past two weeks. You know, Leonard Fournette, Rashad White got 40% of the snaps, man. I mean, that's great. You know, he got only five attempts, but really – Five targets last week, four targets this week. So I like it, man. If he's getting a receiving game and Lenny got like 11 targets or something ridiculous, right? So, but Rashad White was in there. He had the opportunity. He could have got easily a few more targets as well. So I like Rashad White. And then also, you know, Leonard Fournette's a little older too, man, 27. You know, he's been banged up week one, week two, he was already banged up. So I just like Rashad White with the upside. And now if he has that flex appeal, he's going to be getting you five, six targets a game. 40% of the snaps, man. That's really good to see. That's back-to-back, -back, right, games against Casey and Atlanta. You got 40% of the snaps, basically. So Rashad White is definitely probably my favorite little ad and stash. I already have him in a couple of leagues stashed. Yeah, um, you know, in my opinion, like, watching the game this past week, I watched that game, and Rashad White looked like a better running back. Um, Leonard Fournette had a great game, but it was – it was basically because of the passing work, right? 10 catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. On the ground, he was 14 for 56. I mean, that's four yards a carry. It's not very good, right? It's not very efficient. Um, he also has, uh, in another game in week two, only 2.7 yards a carry. In week three, 2.9 yards a carry. Last week, I mean, he only ran the ball three times, so I don't know what happened last week, but um, he just hasn't really been that effective, and so I think moving forward, Rashad White is probably going to get more of a more of a chance to to show what he can do, right? So I yeah. definitely like Rashad White, and I, I think we should also mention. I know we were going to, <clears throat> excuse me, Kenneth Walker, guys. We know Kenneth Walker is probably a big name. Um, he's the number one guy if he's on the waivers, right? He's you know we we but in the leagues that we play in on sleeper, he's. He's not available anywhere. So uh, if you play in maybe CBS leagues or ESPN or you have short benches or Yahoo um, or even sleeper, if he's available, obviously, right, with the injury to Rashad Penny going down, he's probably out the season. Kenneth Walker, he, you need to pick him up. He's got to be number one. But he's not. we're not mentioning him really because he's not available in any of the leagues that we play in. Yep. And so going into it next, we'll go into some honorable mentions. These are honorable mentions, two running backs. We have James Cook finally gets he a little bit of work, right? He had that fumble week one. He gets a good little touchdown, big run for a touchdown. And I just think we've seen uh, Zach Moss in there, right, get some opportunity. And James Cook, man, if James Cook can get a few opportunities, I mean, this is stuff that he could do, right? He's got just big play upside. He's explosive, right? He's a good pass catcher, right? They've been giving the pass catching work to – to Singletary for some reason after they got James, drafted James Cook in round two, which was puzzling. But it seems like with what he's done, right, the play that he made this past week for that touchdown, maybe he gets a little bit more work. So I like James Cook as a little stash right now, right, while he's still not really popped yet, but he can – the opportunity is there, right, in Buffalo. And then Tevin Coleman, got to mention Tevin Coleman. I think it was only eight carries and uh, like four targets, but he had – I think he might have had two touchdowns. He had like 20 points. So Tevin Coleman, right, worth a look there in San Francisco. And De'Ami Brown, De'Ami Brown without um, Jahan Dotson, who's going to be out, I think, another week. De'Ami Brown had a solid game, too. I think he had 24 fantasy points. So just some honorable mentions. You want to talk about any of those, Ryan? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't. first of all, we were laughing because I didn't even know Tevin Coleman was still in the league. You know, Last I heard, he was with the Jets, right? And now he shows up, shows up in the uh, – he shows up in San Francisco and just in street clothes gets in there and plays, puts up 20. But I mean, I don't like Te Tevin Coleman, but that's why they're honorable mentions, right? Deami Brown, Deami Brown had two huge plays and they were both for touchdowns, I believe. So, I mean, 
if you're in a big league or if you're in a league that starts a big bench, I mean, maybe it's a guy you could throw in next week. Um, but, you know, we don't anticipate them having the same types of performances that they did. But I do like I do like Cook, though, man. Cook was an electric player in college. Um, he's a great pass catcher. Um, he's better than Zach Moss. I don't know why Zach Moss is playing. I guess just because he's more experienced at this point. But um, – and I know Cook had some early uh, fumbles and turnovers in the first game, and so he just really hasn't played much since then. He's kind of been in and out a little bit. But um, I think over time, you know, they're going to give him more of a shot because he's just a better player. Going into it now, we're going to get into a new category that we have, and that is strikeout ads. So this is basically you wake up in the morning, right? you missed your guys, some players that might still be out there. So worth mentioning, I think Gus Edwards, he's already practicing. He's been activated off of Pup. We know Dobbins, I mean, he's kind of struggled a little bit, right? He had that one big game, but it hasn't looked too good for Dobbins. But, you know, Edwards also coming off a knee injury. But just worth mentioning, he's 21% rostered, probably stashed way down in your IR. If you scroll down, you can find Gus Edwards, as well as Damian Williams. Damian Williams could get off of IR soon. He's already, I think, in the week four. He got put on IR on, in week two. So he's eligible to come back week six, possibly if he's ready. So Damian Williams, only 8% rostered. And some deep, deep flyers they could possibly be, right, even for Dynasty. You have Avery Williams, 0% rostered, right, in redraft leagues, uh, for, for, rightfully so. And then, but he got a goal line touch. He got a goal line carry, right? He got a touchdown. He got a little yeah, bit of work. A move for a big guy, you know, so. Yeah. Got to put him on there. Deep, deep waiver flyer. And then Deion Jackson, man, 5% rostered, but he filled in decently, right? He came in. You had the injury to Naheem, Naheem Hines. We'll see if Hines is back out of concussion protocol uh, next week. But Deion Jackson got 17 attempts, man, 13 on the ground. He got four targets, 13 points, 13 fantasy points. So that's decent, man, for your 5% rostered, something you could probably get for cheap. Maybe you can give you a spot start next week if you need him. So Deion Jackson, just another deep flyer worth mentioning. All right, guys, so that is all we have for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe and look us up on Apple and Spotify. So until then, we'll see you guys later. Thank you, guys. Good luck this week.